Hello and welcome back to the Bitcoin Bridge. Today we're actually going to head over to Silicon Valley in California to talk to Xiaohui Lu, who is the founder and CEO of Scrypt. Scrypt does uh, contracts on the Bitcoin blockchain, tokenization, and a whole lot more. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, Layer 1 versus Layer 2, Turing completeness, and everything you've always wanted to know about smart contracts and... or just contracts, and why they matter. Xiaohui Lu, welcome to the Bitcoin Bridge. Good to have you on the show. Okay, thank you for inviting me here. Pleasure to be here. So you're originally from Wuhan in China, but you're you're actually based in Silicon Valley now. Can you tell us a little bit about how you ended up there? Oh, it's just um, when I finished my college in uh, China, I think as a lot of people do, you know, I tried to apply for a graduate school in the US. So that's why I, I came here for my PhD in computer science. So after I graduated, I just got my first job as a research scientist at uh, Facebook. So that's why I moved to here and uh, I've been staying here for ever since uh, 2015. 2015. And your company, Scrypt, is also based in Silicon Valley, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yes. Uh, we have, uh, I think, a team members, uh, because most of the people now work uh, remotely. So we have uh, people in, in China. Mm -hmm. We also have a new guy just joined us from uh, France, actually. Okay. He just uh, started this week. Right, right. So I want to ask you a little bit about what Scrypt is, what it does, and the kind of, uh, the kind of clients you have or the kind of users you have. So can you tell me, maybe let's start from okay. the start, you know, how, where did you get the idea and uh, why did you decide to base it on the Bitcoin BSV blockchain? I think the idea, of course, is that uh, as a lot of ideas, we uh, actually come here from uh, Craig Wright. I mean, he has been talking about the high level language for the Bitcoin uh, script on top of Bitcoin script for a long, long time. So if you listen to some of his uh, historic talks, I think that's at least uh, three or four, even more, he t constantly talk about this. And I was uh, listen to his uh, talk and it seems somehow it's just, uh, always, uh, I, I was always thinking in chain or maybe somebody else was trying to do it, but uh, after some period of time, nobody seems to be doing it. So that's why I figured, okay, that's maybe an opportunity maybe for me to just chime in. And uh, fundamentally, I think it's a, the Bitcoin script as we, understand it is uh, is much more powerful than people imagine so I, I kind of feel uh, that's pretty much if not the only way is the best way I know how to scale blockchains in terms of a smart contract capability so that's how it came to be so think about it yeah usually people regard it as a solidity on Bitcoin so or JavaScript uh, on top of a Bitcoin that can mm -hmm. let you write uh, smart contracts very easily so it's a your your SDK is based mainly around uh, JavaScript, I think, unless you've uh, come yes. up with something else since then. Yes. Uh, Has that made it easier for uh, other developers yes. to come in? Uh, what sort of projects have you seen coming in lately? Oh, there's uh, quite a few actually. Uh, there's uh, one. I think one major use people are trying to do using it to to do native tokens on top mm -hmm. of Bitcoin. So talk about uh, there's a few projects. I think one uh, that's released is uh, based is uh, what dot wallet based in uh, China. That's so right. they have launched the so-called batch token, which is based on a script. And also there's one called uh, Bitcoin token protocol. I think that they are working together with the vault wallet to launch not only the token, but also they are trying to launch some kind of a kind of like a, uh, the, if I may use the word decentralized exchange or Uniswap type of things that they're, yeah. they're trying to launch, I think probably this month. And that's another one called the uh, C UTP is controllable UTXO based uh, token protocol, actually based in Tokyo, the guy called uh, Long Li, and uh, he's also trying to launch some kind of token. I think besides token, as some people are trying to do all kinds of a uh, interesting stuff for example some kind of insurance contracts some of them doing for example right so we are doing 
on chain games like uh, tic tac tac or, or poker you can think of uh, any kind of on chain games yeah but I saw then your, the better uh, Sudoku, the example, good thing about you doing it in bitcoin is it's scalable right so basically you can do everything else other chains can do but it's just more scalable and cheaper that's right yeah and uh, I think the, the issue of uh, how Bitcoin scales compared to, I guess, in this case, Ethereum would be the main you know, competitor, mm. not uh, not BTC. Competitor. Mm. Because there, there's no question that uh, you, you can't run contracts on BTC. Whereas uh, Ethereum does run mm. contracts and that's its main selling point, but uh, it has scalability and protocol issues. So, uh, yeah, if you check uh, Ethereum price today, uh, gas price, yeah. you, I think for to run a simple contract, you can easily pay a fee up to like one hundred dollars. That's that's a good day. I think if you are unfortunately you, you are, that's a price surge and everybody trying to send to the exchange, you are go to easily go to like a few hundred dollars these days. So try to imagine build kind of any kind of applications. Is is unless you are trying to move million dollars or billion dollars, is I, I don't see that uh, how how it can work out. Yeah, and if you're uh, trying to move a million or a billion dollars, maybe you shouldn't be using Ethereum anyway. I think you don't. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Or you can also use Bitcoin. It's even cheaper. <laughs> you can do the same thing. <laughs> the the one and only time we'd recommend people use uh, BTC is if you're uh, if your only alternative is Ethereum. So where, yeah. in your opinion, where did Ethereum go wrong? Like, is is the the whole concept? I think flawed? it's a yeah. I think it's a. Uh, I kind of feel it's a, like a misunderstanding, a misconception, mostly because if you read the white paper for Ethereum, they 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 try to list a few uh, arguments why they want to build Ethereum, a new blockchain instead of building something on top of the original Bitcoin. So one of them is saying, uh, of course, all these uh, like talk points we have been hearing about a long time. First, you can, it says uh, it's Turing incomplete. So there are a lot of things you cannot do in, inside a script. And second, it says it cannot maintain state. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the major reasons, I think, because, because people have not figured out how to do it. But that doesn't mean it cannot do right. It's uh, it's this argument is not uh, logical. Just meaning you have not been able to do something doesn't mean it cannot do right. So exactly, yeah. Which is uh, one of the topics I wanted to talk to you about too, because uh, okay, S cool. S recently and uh, you personally have been you know advocating a lot for the fact that Bitcoin is Turing complete and it can maintain a state. Can you tell us uh, why is that important? You know, why, why do we need to do that in order to run a contract on the blockchain? Okay, so uh, let's break into two uh, sub-questions. The first one is uh, why I'll talk about the Turing complete list. Yeah. The second one, i talk about the, how to maintain state. So the, in, in terms of the, the first question, I think it's, uh, I think if you, if, uh, unless you are in BSV, I think what most people believe even today, these days is a uh, so-called uh, Turing incomplete list. That basically means what, what what people when they say this word mostly they mean oh there are a lot of things that you know uh, Ethereum or some other smart contract platform they can do but you cannot do it on Bitcoin. Yeah, it's and, kind of a catchphrase. Uh, I, I, I think, think we spend a lot of time trying to de debunk this. I think is a so I think the the number one article we we read so far is so called the I think probably you have also heard about it, the Conway Game of Life. I did, yes. So In we fact, try to use that it. as a counter argument to disprove this notion. So okay. what, what it basically does there is very straightforward. So think of a uh, Conway's Game of Life has been proven to be Turing complete, right? Mm -hmm. And if you can, if there's a system that can run this Game of Life by deduction, that system has to be Turing, Turing complete, right? Because yeah. otherwise, it's impossible to run something Turing complete on, on, on a system that's fundamentally incomplete, right? Yeah. So by deduction, so Bitcoin we can run game of life that 
directly leads to the conclusion the Bitcoin is too incomplete. Whether you say the Bitcoin script is too incomplete, I, I would say, in my opinion, that it, it is because everything in that contract in the game of life, that's everything is done within script. So in that sense, the, the, not only Bitcoin, but Bitcoin script itself is too incomplete. But some people argue about semantics. But they say, oh, you are using different transactions. But uh, I would say uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's uh, like, a, there's no deep distinction whether you run it in different transactions or not. Because the definition of too incomplete is never says you have to run in one transaction. You find that definition by Turing, I, I would say you, you prove me wrong. But otherwise, I think that's to me is the end of the argument. That's right. Yeah. And I've even seen debates. Does that make sense of, to you? As a layman, yes, it does. I, uh, I'd probably struggle with the technical definition. Uh, when I've looked it up, some people have trouble, disag trouble agreeing on what Turing complete actually means and you know whether details have been added to mm -hmm. that conversation since then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what what is the difference or the main difference, maybe in layman's terms, you between the way Ethereum does its contracts compared to the way you would do it on Bitcoin? Okay, so I think of you, I, I took back using this example. So you probably heard about the uh, UTXO, the unspent uh, transaction output, which is what we use inside uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. So. For, for Bitcoin system is, so when you have some Bitcoin, it's not like you have an account, right? You, you, it's like you have hold all the cash. You have some $1 bill, $2 bill. Yeah. But all of them, they are independent. Does that make sense? So yeah. when I hand you $1, I just have to, I just have to care about that $1 only. I don't have to care the rest of the changes in my wallet, right? So yeah. that means you can do massively parallel processing right because all these coins they are independent of each other so you can independently verify them when you verify that means in our term you are running the contract by unlocking it right versus ethereum ethereum is like a bank account so you go to the bank account let's say that's a that's a bank account you have and i have right but let's say you have one 100 with your, your account right now so you first withdraw 50, then you withdraw 20. But here's the key. You have to do this sequentially. You cannot do it uh, simultaneously. You cannot say, uh, let's say, give it, so you have $100. Let's say you, you want to, you can either do $50, then after you withdraw $50, you have another $50 remaining, then you withdraw the $20. But they, they cannot allow you to do this sequentially uh simultaneous because that could be a problem right you can imagine yeah. let's say you have 100 100 and then you want to make two withdrawals each is 70 dollars right they cannot let you do that right you have to you, if you can be in parallel then you are like a over withdraw your account right you can you can withdraw 140 dollars out of a 100 dollar account i think that's the fundamental limit they have and uh, why I think this is uh, the UTX model, if you think about it, is, uh, is the best way you can scale. You cannot, you cannot do even be more scalable than this, because this is as scalable as you can. You just throw more physical machines at it. It just scales unboundedly. Yeah, as long as you can, because the transactions on Bitcoin are in a chain, you know, as long as you can validate that something was true in the previous block, then it will also be true in the next block or it won't validate. In, I mean, that, that's yes, my explanation of it. It could be terribly, terribly off. Yeah, that's what the notion people usually think about. The, they call it a pure, basically yeah. meaning it's like a mathematical function, right? So think about a square, a double, right? You give yeah. an X, you double it, it, it you will always, always be the same two X. Doesn't matter when you do it, whether you do it sequentially, but uh, if you use an account-based model, because all the accounts they are related, they depend on each other, right? So when you when you run some function, let's say transfer some uh, Ethereum from account one, account A to to B, you may 
you may do it if you do it now you spend one hundred dollars to pay the fee to transfer 100 ethereum but if tomorrow you, you don't have that much balance so you, if you do it tomorrow they will fail versus right. bitcoin if you succeed today it doesn't matter where when you validate it again run it again it will always be succeed if you fail today you if you go to mars and run the same thing again you will always fail it doesn't matter so that's another reason why it's uh, just simpler and have competition and make it more secure yeah i've heard this is not my words, but I've heard some people say that uh, Ethereum was too ambitious by trying to do all of its computing on chain. Is that uh, is that a good way of explaining it to say that it does its computing on chain, or is that not accurate? Uh, I think it's a uh, uh, kind of a. Uh, I would say fifty percent true right. and fifty percent untrue. So I think there's a misconception, even in Bitcoin SV. Mm -hmm. I think that some people, they have this notion, which I don't completely agree, saying, oh, we can scale by uh, doing stuff on layer two. Mm. Okay. So if this argument is true, right, other chains can scale in the same way, right? You're not scaling at all. It's right. pretty much saying, we're now trying to, you know, uh, we're now trying to improve the traffic in Tokyo mm -hmm. by doing what? By asking everybody to stay at home. But you are not building more roads and, uh, you know, digging tunnels or whatever, right? So layer one is kind of like a, you, you are checking the problem on the head. You are actually trying to solve the scalability. Because when people say scalability issue for blockchains, that means scalability on chain, right? Because there's no limit on what you can do off chain. Right. So yeah, that's, uh, that's. So with that. Uh... I think for us, we are also mostly. In BSV, right? Because mm -hmm. of the, we're constantly, you know, trying to build in big blocks. So that's how we are kind of like improving the roads and digging tunnels, build airports. So that's the actual, that's the way, that's the actual scalability. Right, right. Because, yeah, that's another argument I've heard against BSV is that um, BSV uh, contracts and tokens simply takes all the computing and moves it away from the blockchain, which uh, I guess is not true. Yeah, that's not necessarily because mm -hmm. there's a, there are multiple ways you can do tokens or contracts. Oh, by contract, well, when 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 we say at S3, when we say contract, that we we mean it doing in script. So by definition, that means you have to run on chain that part. Right. So yeah. smart contract for us is always within script. So that's on chain. And for token, that's a separate issue. It, you, there are ways to, you can do it in script as we have also sh shown a few, quite a few examples, but that you can also do it in the so-called uh, off-chain, usually when people talk about layer two. Depends on, I think it depends on your use case. There are some cases you want to do it in layer one, but there are some cases you may be better to do it in layer two. I should just explain the difference between uh, layer one and layer two there for anyone who's just coming to this for the first time. Layer one. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, layer one is sometimes called layer zero, I think, by by some people. Okay, that's yeah, that's uh, too much too much notion. Okay, so I think it's, to me it's very simple. If you yeah. are, if you are doing the within script, we call it on chain. Everything, not only the data, but also the computation part. So mm -hmm. that's what I we uh, I usually regard as a called layer one. Everything else, uh, layer two. Right. So uh, we can usually uh, even simplify it to call it on chain or off chain tokens. Uh, I like it as simple as possible. That's usually how I refer to it. Yeah. So layer two would be building a system that's external to the blockchain and just using the blockchain as you know a settlement or a confirmation layer, similar to the way BTC yeah. uses Lightning Network to do as basic transactions. Uh, yeah, you can, y y in one sense, yes. Uh, some people use it as like a database, like using up return to store some metadata. Right, yeah. So how how effective do you think people in Bitcoin BSV have been in communicating this to people? Are you seeing any interest from, from the Ethereum world or from other blockchain sort of contract systems coming over and expressing an interest in BSV? Oh yeah, definitely. I think it's a, uh, we, we started uh, a little bit over one year ago and, uh, in terms of the smart contract, 
because we cannot do anything before Genesis, because uh, if, uh, prior to that upgrade, almost, I wouldn't say almost all, but it's uh, all the most useful opcodes that are disabled, the script is just simply disabled, so you cannot do much. But everything's uh, CoinGeek, uh, London, we released uh, kind of like the, our first uh, script product called IDE. So everything's people have been using it. I think for now, most people are there from within BSV, but there are also several people. I, if you check out our Slack channel, they are coming from the Ethereum world. Yeah. I think it's, um, so I'm, I'm uh, quite confident in the long term they will be coming because there's no, it's just simply there's no alternative. If, if you really want to build some kind of like a, uh, apps that can solve real world problems, it has to scale, right? You cannot rely on, you know, each transaction taking you $10 or sometimes even $100. It's yeah, simply just cool. not doable. I think some Ethereum people, I, which I talk locally, is, uh, it, it, I think uh, I, that's how my personal experience is uh, the Ethereum developers, they are less ideo uh, ideologically driven than like a BDC people because uh, I think it's a lot of developers, a lot of them coming after the, you know, uh, bull market, you know, since 2017. So yeah. they just want to, you know, use the cool technology, build something that people can use. So it's in that sense, it's much easier to convince them to, or some other smart contract uh, developers to join than let's say BTC people. Exactly, yeah. I, I haven't done the math, but uh, probably that's like 10 or 20 people that uh, previously work on Ethereum that's now in the uh, script uh, Slack channel. Really, yeah. Well, I think what they're looking for is just something that works. I mean, that's why they got into yeah. Ethereum in the first yeah. place, because it could do things that BTC couldn't do at the time. Uh, exactly. Another, I think even thing, Ethereum, I mean, that's... Uh, the history is that uh, they try to do it on BTC, but people, just the car developers saying, hey, hey, we don't allow you to use this other than money. So, Yeah. Another thing we should clarify is you said that you weren't able to run complicated scripts before Genesis, and that would lead people to say, oh, you mean you changed, you changed the protocol so that it could do more. But actually, we should clarify that it was it was just restoring the opcodes that were there in the original yes. Bitcoin. Not we didn't actually add yes. anything new. The, no, no. The, the the irony here is the the Bitcoin before Genesis, like ten years after it was launched, was much much less capable than what it was in two thousand nine. Yeah. Actually, everything we can do today is we can do it in two thousand nine, but it's just it has been. <laughs> You know, Bitcoin is seeing this uh, long journey and uh, in the middle of people just, uh, it's like, I like some people in the PSP community talking about this. It's like uh, you're taking the, the engines out of the Boeing 747 and then and then take the wings, you know. <laughs> so Genesis is pr pretty much, it's not changing anything. It's just putting them back so you can fly higher and uh, safely land. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a point I think we need to hammer home because a lot of people don't realize that. They say, you know, oh, BSB can only do all those things because you, you, know, you extended it, you added bits to it, but uh, it was just restoring what was there right from the start, the way Satoshi released it. Yeah, and you don't have to trust us, right? The, the, the old code, you know, from uh, 2009 is still out there. You can just go to GitHub, it's there. You can just compare what the code it does at that time and with what the uh, BSV node software is doing today. You can you can find that they're much, much more similar than compared to BTC, which is uh, which uh, pretty much disable all the useful stuff and add something like a replace by fee or segwit is uh, it's like a yeah back to the analogy it's like a, you only not only take uh, out all the engines from the Boeing 77, <laughs> you also take you know you know, the, the take, you add some, uh, you know, poison gas or you add some, you know, fire in the cabinet, you know, but we are just putting out the fires and uh, restore it. Yeah. Let, let's not try to fly, fly a 747 with a uh, fire in the cabinet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
All right, Xiao Hui, thank, thank you very much for uh, coming on today. And uh, I wanted to say okay. happy Chinese New Year or happy Lunar New Year, wherever you are. Okay. Because this is going to come out. Uh, okay, thank you. you more too. or less to the time. Uh, we'd love to have you on again. Oh, okay. When you've uh, when you've got a few more projects coming on board and give us a few updates because uh, Script is one of those projects that I'm quite interested in. Uh, can you cool. can you tell people where they can go just to find out more? Oh, just go to our website Script.io. Mm -hmm. It's Script.io where we have all the links to our uh, ID, our blog, our documentation our slack channel so that's and also our github code everything we do is uh, pretty active i think we 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 kind of like a release on a weekly basis so you can always uh, stay up to date and also i post uh, our update on all the social media <laughs> so you can just follow us on, just go to escrow.io all right then all right well thank you very much for coming on the show right. and uh, we'll see you again next time Thank you for inviting.